Be clean. Be whole. Be complete. Be pure. Be perfect. Be ready. And be one. So today, the tool that we have is called the bridge. So how are you doing, Aaron? Good. How are you, Dad? Good. So the bridge. So a bridge is something that crosses um, a river or a gorge or an expanse, a sea, something. So uh, what I'd like to do, I'll begin by reading a passage in Luke 16. And uh, it's a story, so it'll take just a moment. It's verses 19 through 31. So I want to read this story, and then we'll, we'll jump into the bridge. So from Luke 16. Now there was a rich man, and he habitually dressed in purple and fine linen, joyously living in splendor every day. And a poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate, covered with sores, and longing to be fed with the crumbs which were falling from the rich man's table. Besides, even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, or hell, he lifted up his eyes, the rich man did, being in torment, and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue, for I'm in agony in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your life you received your good things and likewise Lazarus bad things. But now he is being comforted here and you're in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great chasm fixed so that those who wish to come over from here to you will not be able and that none may cross over from there to us. And the rich man said, then I beg you, father, that you send him to my father's house. And for I have five brothers in order that he may warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. But he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But Abraham said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. Mm. So what do you think of that story? It's pretty, pretty huge. I think the last part, uh, I, this always seems to like amaze me in stories like this in the Bible is like, even if they see like these miracles, they won't be like persuaded or like follow, you know? Right. And I feel like that's pretty reoccurring throughout the Bible that people see like miracles happen, but like don't do anything about it. Yeah. And people whose eyes are opened a lot of times they'll be as naive as the rich person and they'll say, gosh, if we just went out there and, and told these people this truth, they would believe. Yeah. And yet it's people perfect. hear, people hear it all the time and very few come. Yeah. I actually, something crazy happened recently. It was, this is like, I didn't personally see it happen, but like I saw the before and after. And right. so it was a, this conference that we just had and um and this guy like the pastor was like okay get up and like shake someone's hand that you like have never met before or something well i'm just sitting alone in this pew and then there's this guy who's kind of sitting alone too like to the right of me but he has like this condition where like his shoulders up here and he like twitches a lot like that Uh but he's normal like he talks normal he's just like physical condition he may have a uh scoliosis or something in his spine i i yeah uh, something like that but it just has to do with like his uh shoulder like he can stand up straight but his shoulders lifted right just like i don't know and so he like always like twitches his head and so i got up and i shook his hand he was like hey i'm duck and i was like hey i'm aaron and um uh, he's like nice to meet you i was like nice to meet you too and so then we sat back down 
But then I'd seen this guy walk, and he walks like, you know, like, right. and it looks like an upper body issue. It doesn't look like a lower body issue. Right. And um, so, anyways, th- that was on like a Friday, or that was on like a Saturday morning. And then Sunday, he went to church on Sunday morning, the day after. And I get to church late, and I'm and I'm standing in the back by like the mixer board and stuff. And they have like a call to worship time and like worship going on and people getting prayed over. And I don't see anything because I'm in the back. But I found this out like a week ago that apparently that guy went up to go receive prayer. But like he ended up like falling over and he started like screaming in pain. And I was like, if he's screaming, how did I not hear this? I guess the music was just like I was in the back and the music was going. Right. But apparently like people were praying over him and like praying against like a spiritual attack over his body and so then alec was just like yeah this guy just got healed like he none of that like what he was doing with he doesn't twitch he walks normal this and that and i was like really and so him and his uh family or friends they go to church on sundays now and i was playing piano on sunday and so i can see out into the crowd of everybody and i was like i I saw him and i was like oh there he is but he wasn't like twitching or anything. And I was like, man, did this guy like really get healed? <laughs> because like his shoulder wasn't as guarded. It wasn't like up here. It was more like up here from probably being up here so long. Like right. it's, it's like barely adjusting back. And so I'm like waiting for them to all stand up so I can see like if he stands up normally. Because I remember like it wasn't very normal when he did almost anything. Right. And so they call them to stand up, and I'm just staring at this guy from the piano. Cause I'm just like, oh, my goodness, this guy, like, really get healed. And stands up perfectly fine, not twitching. I see him walk and move around, and, like, he's, like, completely transformed. And that is, like, the first time ever. So Sunday was, like, the first time ever I've heard of someone getting healed. And kind of, I guess I was in the same room. I wasn't there seeing it, but I was in the back of the church. But right. seeing a guy before and after – and he didn't go to a hospital. He actually just got prayed over. And now right. his like, whole physical condition in his whole life has changed. And right. just like, what the crap? Like, I don't know. It's like my eyes were like, like you said, it's like my eyes were open. And so right. in my head, I'm like, I can't notice something like that. And then not acknowledge God and like right. want to like be, I guess, uh was it like they didn't say convinced but whatever you said in the message like they just don't they choose they weren't persuaded you know right and so in my head I'm like how are you not like that stuff is incredible yeah well and of course the, the picture here in this story is he's you have hell and heaven is visible from hell and they're talk they talk to one another but you can't you can't get across that that gap uh that 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 huge valley or that chasm it's called that that huge drop off and so uh he could see you know the good that lazarus was now in after living a terrible life Mm -hmm. it is funny that he says even then uh, well father send lazarus down you know he's still trying to bark orders to lazarus (laughs) who's yeah who's with our father in heaven but uh no that's a great story that's amazing you know uh i remember this is a little off topic for the the bridge today because it's uh it, it's about heaven and hell kind of yeah and and in that gap but i remember hearing a story I, i'd gone to haiti and uh isaac years ago when he was in college with the Tech Wesley Foundation, he went to Haiti on a mission trip. I went three times, but in in between those years, these these um, teams would continue to go through to Haiti just about every year or every couple of years. And I heard a story that these girls were walking because we always went with an interpreter, and there'd be three or four of us these girls went with an interpreter into this village and they went into this little hut and they're seriously like little tent made out of corrugated tin sheds as all they are, their houses. And this lady was there and she, you know, this little old lady and they 
talk to her and asked if they could pray for her. And she said, no, I, I don't want you to pray for me. Uh, I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in that stuff. Yeah. And they said, well, we'd like to pray for you. And she said, well, could you don't pray for me, but could you pray for my daughter? And they were like, well, I guess. And so she took them through this curtain and there was a little bitty bed kind of, and this paralyzed um, girl was laying there. Uh, I mean, she was, uh, I think, grown or late teens or something, but she was just laying there uh, paralyzed. She said, could you pray for her? And so they, uh, you know, they're just, uh, yeah, we'll pray for her. So they prayed for her. Well, the girl got up and walked and they were like, <laughs> I mean, they were surprised. They were like, yeah. well, we, we prayed for it. We didn't know it was going to happen. And uh, so you know, the lady was like, Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I, I still don't know that she wanted to give her life to Jesus, but she was so thankful for the prayer. And, and there was that answer. And I was like, it, it's amazing that people can even see their own child get healed yeah, and still not say yes to Jesus. Just want to right. say, I'll give everything to Jesus for that gift you just gave me. Yeah, literally. So what does it take for people to start believing in something around here, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyway, I want to talk about this gap, this, this gap between heaven and hell. I want to talk a little bit about what heaven and hell are, uh, which we already have some in the, our very first podcast about death, that tool about death. Uh, but the bridge diagram that I, I draw up and you can't see it on the podcast. You'll, I've drawn it up for YouTube. Uh, those who look at it on YouTube, but I'll try to explain it well enough where I'll, I'll paint the picture. You don't have to have the drawing in front of you, but the bridge diagram I got, it was, it was thought up or I, I first heard about it uh, being used by the navigators and they were in the 1940s and fifties. Uh, this group Dawson Trotman was the guy who formed the navigators and, and he, um, I won't get into all his story, but basically he, they came up with lots of scripture memory tools and this bridge diagram to go out and tell people about Jesus and about uh, your faith and how to see things clearly. Right. And I've used, I've used the bridge diagram for years uh, with people with kids in uh, confirmation class or, or just anybody. Sometimes if, if I realize I'm with someone who really doesn't understand the concept of of God and Jesus and how it all fits in. I use the bridge diagram. So it's a great tool for people to use. The, the best way to be able to use it is to memorize some of the scriptures mm -hmm. that, uh, that we'll be talking about today. Right. And, and so I'll just jump right in. So there's a bridge and I already have the picture all drawn here, but I usually draw it with, um, a uh, a line kind of a horizontal line and then it goes straight down and that forms uh, uh the world right on, on the left bottom corner and then on the right i draw a line going up and then horizontally across and that forms on the right bottom corner uh god in heaven so we have the world on the left bottom corner and god on the right bottom corner and in between there's a gap. There's a gap and it's filled with, uh, in this picture, it's filled with flames. It's called hell and death. And so, uh, the horizontal lines are a timeline you're walking across. And in the world, uh, we have what's called, uh, uh or the navigators had, I think it's the navigators. They had the, the Roman road. Right. And so it's five verses that are great verses. And the first one is Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I like to draw this with people, little stick figures on this horizontal line to the world. And then when they come to the edge, they fall off and they burn in hell and they're dead. Mm. And that's what we all are going to do. We're all going to, you know, when our, when our physical bodies die, which we talked about in death, that's not the real death. The real death is our spiritual bodies then our spiritual bodies are going to be separated eternally from God, which is the real death. So that's, that's it. That's the picture. Yeah. But we move on to the next scripture, 
the way, for the wages of sin, so we've all, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. So I just explained that. That's what we're all getting. But it says, the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, hey, maybe there's some hope here. So we have this gap. And then it says in Romans 5, 8, the next verse. So we have Romans 3, 23, Romans 6, 23. Now Romans 5, 8, it says, but God who's over here that we can't reach has dem demonstrates his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So in between this gap, which continues the horizontal line all the way across from the world to God, we have a cross. And so uh, in the middle of that, I like to write Jesus and I wrote Romans 5, 8, because Jesus died for us. So the wages of sin were was death. I was supposed to die, but Jesus died for me instead so that I would have eternal life. So he's died for me, but I don't have eternal life yet. I have to do something. And that's the next verse, Romans 10, 9. It says, Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yeah. So then I confess Jesus. I say yes to Jesus. That's that's a, another tool we've talked about. I say yes to Jesus. I'm saved. And uh, then the next verse, Romans 10, 13, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Mm. Another in the New American Standard, which I usually quote, it says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Doesn't matter who you are. On the face of the earth, if you call on Jesus, you will be saved. The thief on the cross was about to die. He called on Jesus, and he was saved. Mm -hmm. So so we have the Roman road, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Mm. In Romans 10, 13, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So uh, you can also, I like to put on the top of the cross, John three sixteen because it's basically encompasses all of this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow. So I can use this diagram to explain to anybody the reality of God, us, and, and what's going to happen. Right. Um, I also like John 14, 6. It's, it says, Jesus says, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the only way to get across this chasm, across this great expanse between hell and, and God, or between the world and God, without going to hell, is through Jesus. Wow. So, I, so I've never seen anyone break down that John 3.16 verse with that diagram. Like how you said, like, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, I did it when you were in confirmation class, but you probably don't remember. <laughs> that, that was like, that was years ago. <laughs> Like a decade ago. So see how cool that is? If you if you just draw if you're able to just draw that up and sketch that out and memorize those verses, mm -hmm. it's it's such an easy tool uh to lay out uh where people are at, what what's going on. Um there's a uh well there's also Acts four twelve, there's a number of verses, but in Acts four twelve, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among mankind by which we must be saved, which is the name of, of Jesus. So we're saved through Jesus. And um, also uh, if you if you take that you can uh, well, what I'm doing right now with, with a youth group 
is uh, I laid out a piece of paper. And so when I'm drawing it, I'm saying, you draw this while I'm drawing it. So I would always encourage people who share it to get other people, if possible, to draw it themselves. Right. So then when you leave, they have a copy of it, but also they practice drawing it. And then that that's the first step in moving toward sharing it with others. Right. The, so it's, it's called the bridge diagram. So I want to talk about, uh, some of the things that come out once you, once you jump into that, um, when you have forgot J- John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It goes on in, in the next verses for God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. So that picture is a diagram of not Jesus coming with a sword, you know, cutting people up, Yeah. <laughs> but, but cause he's, he's coming back with a sword and he's going to divide those who are with him and those who are not, uh, it says his tongue is the sword when he returns. So, uh, but he came, you know, the first time to die for us. Uh, it says the one who believes in him is not judged. The one who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. So that's why Jesus didn't have to judge because they've been judged already. Right. You, those who believe in Jesus and those who don't. You know, we have a lot of racial junk that's going on in our world and in our, especially in our country. But I always like to tell people there's only two races on the face of the earth. Those who know Jesus and those who don't, that's it. I believe anybody that gets into those uh, arguments on any side in any fashion, they're out to cause division because uh, we are one body in Christ. And Basically, there's one body against Christ. So this one body is the bride of Christ, and we're to be in love with one another. We're also to be in love with those who don't know Christ. They've been judged already, and, you know, it, it's pretty harsh judgment. We'll talk about here in a minute. Yeah. So he, he says uh, they've been judged already, and this is the judgment that the light has come into the world. This is John three nineteen. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light. So it's just like that story about uh, Lazarus and the rich man. You know, they see Jesus or they've heard from the prophets. They could have somebody come back from the dead and tell them, but they love darkness rather than the light. Right. They're not not going to buy into it. It says, for their deeds were evil. In verse 20, for everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light so that his deeds will not be exposed. But the one who practice the truth, practices the truth comes to the light so that his deeds will be revealed as having been performed in God. And then Jesus, uh, well, and then John 8, 12, uh, you know, five chapters over, it says, then Jesus again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then in the next chapter, John 9, 5, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So we have this idea that, uh, you know, Jesus has come. He's the light of the world. We should turn to him. He's the hope of getting to God. Uh, He's the way, the truth, and the light. So uh, anyway, what do you think of of the picture as it's laid out so far. He kind of presents to them when he says like, no one like, like I'm the light and no one like it's out of darkness except through me. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, I believe it. <laughs> and, <laughs> Good. Uh, but I mean, whenever I think of this stuff of like, you know, Jesus saying like, I'm the light, no one gets uh, out of darkness. And unless it's through me, I think of like, you know, like, to what extent, um, what's, what's really like being in the light and then like being in the dark? Cause is it like, is being in the light, believing in Jesus, but then it's like, none of us are perfect. So we're, we're always gonna, you know, fall short of the glory of God. And 
we're going to sin and it's going to be like part of our daily life. So right. then there comes that confusion, which I think is, you know, confusion from like evil, like an evil spirit who's like trying to tell us like, oh, well, no, I'm not with Jesus because I keep messing up, you know? Right. So like my question is really like, where do you feel like the line falls between like, are you in the light with Jesus or like, are you in the dark? Right. Well, uh, you know, we can we can actually know if we're with Jesus or not, because yeah. He said, I will send you a helper, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one counselor. who, the counselor, yes. He's the, he's the one who convicts us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Yeah. So not just of sin and says, here's your sin, but he says, but here's what's righteous as well. And mm -hmm. here's the judgment about it. And so th when we when we give ourselves to Jesus, when we repent of our sins, and when we uh, give them to him and lay them on him, his back, which he put on the cross and died for. So he already paid the price for those sins. They're removed from me. Right. Now, now he says in, in uh, John um, Matthew five forty eight. he says, um, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And I've heard, you know, I've talked to you about this before. I think I've even mentioned it on a podcast about, asking people from the pulpit, okay, how many of you are perfect? Raise your hands. And nobody raises their hands. And I'm always amazed because I'm thinking, okay, when I tell them, am I the only one who's perfect? I'm the only one raising my hand here. And everybody laughs, but I'm serious. I'm perfect. Well, how am I perfect? Because Jesus died for all my imperfection. <laughs> he right. died for my sin. I gave him that sin. He died for it. I said yes to that. It's gone. But now I have to live that out. And I and I still sin and I'm in this world of sin and and I'm like how how can I still sin? What's that about? And Paul talks about that a lot in the in Romans um I won't get into all of that, but uh so so what do I do? Well, I go uh, I pray. I pray to the Father, you know, Father forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me and lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. So I pray, God, uh, you know, basically make me right with you. And I want to confess my sins to you and I want to confess my sins to others. And I want to get be right so that the Holy Spirit who dwells in me has a clean place to work. Right. And so that that light of of God, the Holy, the spirit shining forth, uh, would shine in the world around me. You know, uh, we never lit candles in the, in the Baptist church when I was growing up, but in the Methodist church, we've always had every church I pastored at, we've had two candle holders up on the altar. Yeah. And so I've always told people, um, I've heard they mean different things, but what I've always told people, what they've represented for me and what I've told people is one is, is, Jesus is the light of the world, and that represents one of them. Jesus is here, the light of the world, and his Holy Spirit, the light in us that goes out with us, is the other one. So when we, so those candles don't mean anything, but they represent for us, if we, if we want them to, the light that's going out, the light that's in Jesus, the light of the Holy Spirit in us as we go out. So it's not me shining although when when i'm washed clean i will shine when something's perfected it will it will radiate the glory of god um so the spirit in me shines forth uh so the world is confused about that mm. but but you know some of the other tools we talked about cleaning up but also about forgiveness all those things are how we yeah become that light yeah i feel like it's also just you know one big walk with god and so it's oh, not that, always, yeah. it's not always like oh well i accepted jesus i do not sin anymore but i think you know most testimonies i've heard from other people it's usually like well i accepted christ and then it's like well where do i go now and so you kind of like have to figure out like the character of God still and you still have to like walk with him and he'll walk with you. And as time goes by, 
from the people who like will give their testimony they say you know i may have been like believing in god for like five years or a decade and then god was just like hey i want you to give this up like i want that place in your heart and so then they're like okay you have it and so things start kind of like shutting off over time because right. it, it takes it takes time and you can't just drop everything cold turkey and so i think i think jesus knows that and you know he works with us in a way that we can understand it and like at a pace that we can take it well and I, it's different for everyone some people it, it's 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 I always tell people it's always a process, but for some people it's a pretty short process. Some people it's a long process. This is radical so, to some people. Well, you know, I've I've known people that said, "Man, I, you know, I went to a concert. Uh, you know, I was a drug dealer. I went to a Christian concert, not knowing it was a Christian concert, and all of a sudden I gave my life to Jesus and found and <laughs> felt I was supposed to, uh, you know, be a pastor and preach the gospel for the rest of my life." I mean, I know, I know a person that that's his story. <laughs> he uh, went to the wrong concert, and then yeah, he was like, like, "Yeah, there's gonna be people. I bet I can sell some drugs to these people." <laughs> it was a Christian concert. My goodness! And you know, they gave a great. Uh, uh, they shared the gospel in a powerful way, and he was the, the spirit jumped on him, and he was transformed that day. He, he said he gave everything up that day, and um. You know, for for me, mine was a longer, a much longer process. Of course, I wasn't a drug dealer, but, yeah. but uh, it, it was just a longer process. So, you just there, there's no one one way with God. You know, the the thief on the cross, as I mentioned earlier. So he's a terrible guy. He doesn't have time to go through a long process. He's dying. Yeah. So Jesus washed him clean, and there he was with Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. So. Uh, I have, I have some other verses though. I want to get into about kind of that, that, that side of, uh, you know, we're, we're with God and it's perfect. It's pure. It's holy. It's wonderful. But then there's that other place, hell. Mm -hmm. And yet there's people that are walking around basically living in hell here on earth. Cause hell is just set. Like I said, it's not just a place. It's separation from God. Yeah. Yeah. So Isaiah uh, 5, 18 through 21, woe to those who drag wrongdoing with cords of deceit and sin as if with cart ropes, who say, let God hurry, let him do his work quickly so that we may see it and let the plan of the Holy One of Israel approach and come to pass so that we may know it. So they're, they're doing all this sin and, and yet they feel they're people of God. And so they're saying, oh God, do the wonderful things you do because I'm right there with you. But then he says in verse 20, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. So what he's saying there is these people think they're right. They think they're the light and yet they're bringing in darkness. In fact, they they got uh, wagon loads of of evil they're dragging along with them and they're so they're not only in darkness they're carrying darkness with them and they're calling themselves light mm. and he's saying woe to those who who call evil good and good evil who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter yeah so wow. that's the world we live in today if you look out anything you hear on the news or you hear people talk politicians whatever you just have to know that they think they're t speaking the truth. Many of them think God's on their side and they're, it's all lies. It's all evil. So that's just the world we live in. We, we need to understand this picture that there's God and there's a separation between him and the evil, whether it's evil in the world or hell itself, where all evil just goes into a, a fiery pit. So uh, let's talk about that evil, I guess, a little bit. Yeah. First of all, some people say, well, what about reincarnation? Uh, I wish I could take the time to quote uh, that cowboy poem, that reincarnation poem. It's pretty funny, but I won't get into it. But uh, they, there's people that believe in reincarnation or people 
uh, that think, well, everybody's going to go to heaven, you know, because right. Jesus died for everybody's sins, so everybody's going to go to heaven. Well, that's not exactly what the Bible says. It, not even the Roman road it says it, you have to confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. But in Hebrews 9.27, it says, and just as it is destined for people to die once, so you don't reincarnate and die over and over again. You die once, and after this comes judgment. So this judgment of, of God uh, comes. You, you know, you, you don't, some people say, well, you know, what about if they're in, in hell, can they, uh, and we might have talked about that before, if they're in hell, <clears throat> hell, can they, is there a way out? You know, is there like a purgatory or something in between? Not according to Hebrews nine twenty seven, you die and then you have judgment. So Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, this is verse twenty eight, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly await Him. So He's going to come and scoop those uh, who've who've given their lives to Him and are separated from sin, right? Because of because of His blood. Now we say, well, well, gosh, I still sin, so I'm not separated from sin. But it's Christ's blood that washed over you that separates you from sin. You have to receive that death of Jesus and his blood that's washed you clean. Yeah. In fact, when he returns, he's going to be on a white horse. His robe is going to be white, dipped in blood, his blood. So uh, you it's real important for Christians to remember and have that picture of Jesus returning for us, his bride, because of his blood that washed us clean, not yeah. because of our work or anything good we do. We can't do enough. And people always say, well, how much, how much good should I do? Well, you should always do good, but it's not going to get you into heaven. Uh, it's by faith that you get into heaven, not yeah. by works. So let's talk about hell there a little bit. You know, we talked about it during death, that it's not yeah. really a place, but it is kind of a place because there, you know, Jesus gives this story of the rich man going there. Mm -hmm. And there's a lake of fire there, and there's a weeping of gnashing and gnashing of teeth. I'll, I'll read just Revelation 20. It says, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone. Um, in Revelation 20, that was in verse 10, Revelation 20, verses 14 and 15. Then death and Hades, or hell, were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So there's this, this lake of fire. As Abraham said, um, you know, can... Can Lazarus bring, not Abraham, the rich man in the story, yeah. can, can Lazarus dip his finger in some cool water and put it on my tongue because the heat, the flame is so hot here. Yeah. So he was describing where he was, separated from God. Uh, in Luke uh, 13, it says Jesus was passing, beginning with 22, and Jesus was passing through one city and village after another, teaching and proceeding on his way to Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, are, th are there just a few who are going to be saved? And he said, strive to enter through the narrow door for, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able to. So, you know, this, this, this bridge that we're crossing is a narrow bridge it's not just everybody's going to heaven. There are some who are really seeking it, but they're not going to find Jesus and they're not going to be able to enter because, and the reason they're not going to be able to find Jesus is because of the sin in their life and the attack of the demonic host and the devil yeah. who's out to steal, kill and destroy. So it's not that God's so evil that he can't make it obvious to them. There's barriers they've put up and that the devil has put up in their way. Hmm. So, and then he says, um, and he says, uh, in that place where those people will go, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but yourselves being thrown out. So hell is not only full of fire, it has the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, if we, um, let's see, I'll, I'll go on. We have in, um, this is Matthew 13, which is, whenever you hear Matthew 13, think of parables, it has lots of parables. Right. I won't, I won't get into this uh, parable, but at the end of it, he says, Matthew 13, <clears throat> 49 and 50. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth and remove the wicked from among the righteous. So when Jesus returns on his white horse, all the heavenly host of angels are returning as well on white horses. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hmm. So on my diagram here, if you look in this top corner, uh, up in the sky, I like to draw, draw in, in a God, a God over here on the right, I drew in green because God the Father is uh, the creator. He cre and I like to think of creation as grass, trees, growth. So I put God up here as well. So this represents heaven, this little circle. Mm -hmm. But if you'll see, I put these little, they're supposed to be birds. Do yeah. they look like birds? Okay. There's 15 of them, and they're red, uh, the color of Jesus. Uh, I couldn't put them white because it's on a whiteboard. So they're red, and they're coming back with Jesus. This, these represent these angels I just read about. Over here, you see these birds? There's no, five. it's not in the camera. Oh, there it is. So there's five of them. Yeah. And they're black. So they're angels as well. They're the bad angels. Yeah. The so, angels are not in heaven. So, um, I will mention four other times in Matthew, it mentions the weeping and gnashing of teeth. But uh, in Revelation 12, it says this. Uh, I'll begin with verse 3. Then another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. On his heads were seven crowns. And it, Verse four, and his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven and hurled them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she gave birth, he might devour her child. So the woman is uh, Eve and the child is, you know, all of us and dragon wants to destroy us. The third of the stars are um, in the in this next verse, but they are those evil angels that I drew those five. And so there's a third of them. So I drew, I drew, um, actually a third. If there were, there were, there, there I should have drawn 16. There should have been eight down there. Yeah. And I should have drawn, uh, 16 up, up there. So, uh, but in revelation 12 verse seven, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels. So the good angels, Mm-hmm waging war with the dragon, Satan. Uh, and this is how we know the dragon is Satan. The dragon and his angels waged war, and they did not prevail, and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So, uh, earlier it mentioned a third of the stars of heaven, which were the angels. And here it mentions specifically that it's the devil and his angels. Right. So we had, so if I'd drawn eight down low, there'd be 16. So there's twice as many angels that stayed with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And a third of them left. So that third are, are causing all kinds of turmoil. Um, so, in verse 12, then, of Revelation 12, it says, For this reason rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you with great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. And in verse 17, So the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we have this battle raging for 
in the heavenlies, which Paul said, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the uh, rulers, the the world forces of darkness, the powers in the heavenly places, um, the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. So uh, that's where the battle rages for us. Right. In, in Revelation 20, verse 2, and he t- took hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil, the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. So um, basically there is a heaven, there is a hell, there is a devil. There are spirits out there. There are good spirits and there are bad spirits. Yeah. I always think of uh, the wizard of Oz. Are are you a good witch or are you a bad witch? (laughs) And uh, so uh, that's a good question for people to ask. Or, you know, uh, you the spirits, we're to test the spirits, the Bible tells us. We're to test and see where they're at, especially in this day and age of Isaiah 520, where people call good evil, evil good, light darkness, darkness light, bitter sweet, sweet bitter. It's a confusing world, and even good people are confused. So we need the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God right. directing us uh, always. Now, so do you have any questions there? Does that bring anything to like, um, how you're talking about the Re- Revelation 12 or 20? What was it? The Both. The uh, they were cast down in Revelation 12 about the devil and a third uh, of his angels and all that. They say that. No, that they say that like the bridge seven, it's, it's a narrow, it's a narrow. Uh, oh, the bridge is narrow. Yeah, that yeah. was in Matthew. Oh, Matthew. Yeah. Um, Matthew 13. Like, well, because or if it, I'm sorry, Luke. Luke 13. Luke 13. Um, anyways, because it says how Jesus says, confess with your tongue that Jesus is Lord and like you'll be saved. Right. But then it says, you know, sin and stuff won't enter. So it makes it like very narrow because they're like things oppressing us that like will keep us from uh you know entering in heaven so does that mean that like would you say that the evil spirits are oppressing people or keeping them from confessing that jesus is lord or would you say that like if people confess that jesus is lord then they can still be like oppressed by evil spirits to not make it into heaven yes both um because the battle's not over (laughs) it rages in fact the way i've drawn this and i always draw it this way if you see right here See how these this guy's crossing over? Mm-hmm. So he's crossing over the bridge of Jesus Christ. He's made it to to be with God, the Father. And see how there's a bunch of people right here? Well, that's the church. That's what the church does. The church just gets across into heaven, and then they stack up. And they're always looking back at the world and sin. And, and Satan and his demonic host are always attacking them. And pulling them down and making them feel not worthy or like they're not really saved or, uh, you know, he's always bringing temptation in. And and they pile up here and they focus on that, on the world of sin. But see, I have a, I've drawn a guy over here on the right. Mm-hmm. And which way is he going? He's going fast. Further. Yeah, he's going further. He's, he's running with God. He's zooming. So a long time ago, I don't know, 30 something years ago when i first started drawing this i started well where am i on this and i thought well i'm i'm like right here and in my head i thought man i want to be way down here i want to be way down the road so i ever since i've always drawn one guy running further and further into god further and further away from this this battle and this stuff that's going on because this is where i want to be i want to be uh, in fact, I usually draw somebody up in the air like they've jumped up in the in the air and they're praising God. Uh, so, so to me, with this bridge diagram again, you can you can explain that that we pile up here and we're focused. Or we're looking. If I drew this bigger, you could see the faces actually looking back right. instead of instead of looking forward to God. So, so many Christians say yes to God. They do enter into a relationship with God. They're they are saved. They are going to heaven. Uh, but their eyes are turned toward the sin, saying, oh, those poor people, and look at all that mess, and 
oh me oh my and they get on the phone and they talk to their friends about all the all the terrible turmoil and they uh, they never move further with god they never uh you know most christians i meet don't have a regular time with god i would say most of them don't even know if they've ever heard from god mm. I, I mean i know some people say well you can only hear god through the Bible, through his word in the Bible. That's how he speaks to us. I'm like, nah, he's God. He can speak to me any way he wants. Yeah. He, he's a, he's a pretty big boy. <laughs> you know, I, he's not, he's not bound by my little way of thinking. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I believe he spoke to all these people who wrote the Bible. And so, uh, yeah. so, so we have God doing what God does best, uh, loving us for God. So love the world. Here's a great way of, of saying that verse, John 3, 16, of course, the most famous verse in the Bible, because it, it lays the picture out of the gospel of Jesus Christ for us. But it's uh, to put your name in it. It's, For God so loved Rick uh, that he gave to Rick his only begotten son, that if Rick would just believe in him, Rick would not perish, but Rick would have eternal life. And when you put your name in there, it just it has so much personal meaning. It, it's such a, a, a great tool in and of itself. Right. Uh, just to, just to in, enjoy and uh, begin to, to speak to God about that and say, God, you, you really love me, don't you? You really love me, don't you, Jesus? You really love me, Holy Spirit. You want to live in me, not just the church, not just those who said yes, all of that, but me. Right. And so now I step into this wonderful relationship with the living God and he can speak truth to me and he can, he can make me the light of the world as I step out. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're supposed to be the salt and the light of the world. So now I become the light because I have his Holy Spirit shining through me. I'm like a, a lighthouse in the darkness when I go out there. So, uh, so anyway, you know, the, the bridge diagram is a great tool to uh, visualize what's going on, how to see where you're at. And I like to hold it up. In fact, we'll be doing this next week at youth because we talked about the bridge diagram this week. Uh, I like to just hold it up and say, where are you on this? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> where, where are you? Are you are you over here? Are you over here? Are you uh oh down there? Where are you? So hopefully none of them say they're down there. Well, it's, yeah, that means their their body's dead and they're eternally condemned. Talking so, to uh, yeah. no oh, the window on yeah. that one. Is, is that? <laughs> um I, I do want to throw a few caveats out. One, uh I've had people say, Well, what about all the animals and everything? Do they go to heaven? And um I don't know. You know, I always think, gosh, it'd be nice, Lord, if they didn't get punished for all of our sin. But I'm sure it doesn't work that way exactly. But what do you think? Are there are there animals in heaven? Yeah, absolutely. Why why wouldn't there be? I mean, God created them. That's just like saying, you know, is there going to be water and grass in heaven? Is there going to be, you know, yeah. is there going to be thing, other things we enjoy? I think animals are just... You know, they were put on here for us to enjoy and like take care of, and so right. You know, I can take care of, but just like fat, be fascinated by God's creation. So I think a lot of God's creation is going to be in heaven, and His creations that we haven't seen, like a color is going to be in heaven. So I mean, I think of animals, like I, I don't know. It's always weird because you're like, well, do animals have like souls? And then people are like, well. Some say yes, some say no, and I'm like, man, then I get on Facebook or something, I see a dog crying because its family is gone. I'm like, that thing has feelings. Like, what are you, what are you saying? These things are depressed. Like, <laughs> they get sad, they get happy to like see people. I don't know. So, it's, I think it's, uh, I think they they're in heaven for sure. Well, um, we do know for sure if some animals are in heaven because Jesus actually is returning on a big white horse. Yeah. I'm All just... the angels are going to be riding 
white horses. So we know there's horses in heaven. I hope there aren't flies in heaven. Like, <laughs> I'm sure there's not. Actually, God says, you know, he created this earth for to be heaven, you know, for us to live with him and walk in, in eternity. And we messed that up. So he says he's going to destroy this one. He's going to give us a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah. There will be a new physical place. We'll have a new physical body. We'll, we'll live there. And I believe there will be animals there. And oh, yeah. the, the Bible says that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So mm-hmm. anything that has a breath to it has a spirit in it. It's not a spirit made in the image of God, but it is a spirit. And so, you know, if you, if you, again, when I went to Haiti, there were people who said, you know, uh, my neighbor turned into a dog and came and barked outside my window last night. Wow. They believe, they believe that. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not from a world that talks about stuff like that or believes that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I'm just going to open my eyes and see what you tell me while I'm here in Haiti. Yeah. And so what he told me or spoke to me was that their neighbor didn't actually turn in to a dog, but a dog has a spirit and an evil spirit that can live within that person can leave that person, enter into that dog and come bark outside their, their window. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you look in the spiritual world, in spiritual terms, it's you can see why they would think, well, that's that my my neighbor could even been speaking. I mean, that's just that, like that story where the evil spirits, the demonic spirit got cast into those pigs. And right. Exactly. I mean, it can they can be possessed just as like people can be possessed or whatever it might be, you know, I'm just I'm anything just, that has a breath uh, those spirits can move into. And so, um, anyway, so I would say animals, uh, I don't, you know, if my specific animal, uh, little Hans, my dachshund I had when I was a little boy, uh, if he, if he's going to, if he's in heaven or not, um, although he kind of went crazy his last five years of life or whatever, but anyway, um, you know, you think, gosh, it'd be nice to have those animals in heaven. So I don't know how it's going to, which animals will be there but i know there are animals there and uh so we we should think of heaven we should think of what it's going to be like in heaven i like to tell people uh at funerals you know to think about heaven and i always think of gosh in heaven they're going to have m&ms and double stuff oreos and chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes and gravy because those are things i like and heaven's going to be wonderful so uh you know in my head i'm thinking well those things may not be there but there'll be even better things than those right so so i'll think of the best that i want and it's going to be even better yeah that in heaven so Uh, it's so people well, you shouldn't think, and I'm thinking, yes, you should. You should think about heaven a lot because you're going to spend eternity there. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good, it's a good place. Yeah, absolutely. Great look at so it. The, so the bridge diagram helps you talk about the world, the sin of the world, hell, and that gap between hev- heaven and hell, and the fact that once you're there, you're there once uh once you're saved you're saved you know so you're you're in heaven so um you should now i say that and then i have people that say uh they they call this thing once saved always saved there's people that believe that uh and i I don't want to get into all that i don't actually believe it that way but uh but there's so much nuance involved in it that it's not even worth the the discussion. <laughs> yeah. Mostly, uh, the key is to walk with Jesus and you and say yes to Jesus, walk with Him, live with Him, um, get clean with Him. You never have to worry about those issues; yeah. they're just not even issues. So, sure. uh, you have anything else? Any other thoughts about this tool for the day? No. Yeah. Okay.
No. <laughs> it's a cool tool, though. It's a really cool tool to yeah, use. I, I like the diagram. I mean, I remember you showing it to me when I was younger and to other kids who did confirmation and stuff. But it's also just one of those topics. I mean, it's one of those. I just say it's a mystery of God just because, you know, whenever right. Jesus said he's going to send the Holy Spirit, he said, you know, I, I don't know exactly what it says, but he said basically like. You know, you don't know everything, but he'll help you, like, he'll counsel you, and he'll okay. show you stuff. And so, there's just so much stuff that we're not going to know. And yeah. so, I mean, just activate the faith, and I, you got to have faith in it. Because if you don't, then you're going to lose your faith. And like you said, once saved, always saved. If you don't, if you lose your faith, you're probably, I mean, I don't know. You have to have, have faith to be saved, I feel like. So. Well, yeah, for sure. So. <laughs> well, good. Good, good. Well, do you want me to pray as we close? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Father, I just thank you for uh, these tools that you give us, this tool from the navigators from uh, years ago. Uh, what a blessing it is. And uh, it just it helps put a picture in our minds to help us uh, understand the reality of uh, life and death, of you and of the sinful world and uh, what joys we have in Jesus, our hope of eternal life, uh, our only hope of eternal life. So, uh, Jesus, come, love on us, send forth your Holy Spirit to the world around us. Uh, I pray that you'd get uh, these tools out just to uh, everyone all around the world, that they would uh, see and know the great and beautiful work that Jesus is for us. So, bless us, Father, uh, in the days ahead. Bless us. Uh, with all we do and clean us up and make us beautiful in your eyes that we're one beautiful bride for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus prayed to his father three times that we may be one. Let's get out there and try to answer Jesus's prayer. Let's go be one.